Hello everyone, my name is Laura and this... I'm filming! Oh, sorry, I thought you were Hello, hello everyone, my name is Laura, this is my channel, Laura's Little Library, and welcome to the start of this vlog. So, I am back home, which is why I'm in front of a Christmas tree, uh, <laughs> rather than my bookshelves. Um, I think most videos that I film at home will probably be in front of the tree, just because it is the nicest background. And the lighting is not the worst, <laughs> but we'll have fun. So, yes, this week is fall -a -la thon It is currently Monday, so technically it started yesterday, and I did do quite a bit of reading yesterday, but now is kind of my first time that I have to film. And it's like 4 o'clock, it's 4.40 in the evening. So I've already kind of had a full day of trying to like apply for jobs in the area uh, over the holidays. And I've done a little bit of reading, but not a lot. So my TBR for Falalalathon, oh my goodness, that's going to be so hard to say as many times. So my TBR for the readathon that I'm doing this week. Uh, consists of three books. So the first one is The Other Side of Perfect. This is by Mariko Kurt and I'm reading this book to fulfill a bunch of prompts. So that prompt fit the read a book with blue and white on the cover, a read a book that was gifted to you, and the newest book on your physical TBR, as well as read an own voices diverse rep book. So <laughs> it fit four prompts and I actually already finished it. So I, I ended up listening to the audiobook of this in a day. Like I just went right on through it. It really helped that yesterday was like a 10 hour drive though, so I mean. I can actually just go right on ahead and say the review of this book uh, as I've already read it, but I've already got those four prompts done for this readathon, which is pretty impressive for me. <laughs> But, so I wasn't the biggest fan of our main character, I just felt like I never really warmed up to her, and she was just, not not necessarily that she was stubborn, because like a character who's stubborn is fine, that's a character trait, but there just wasn't much else to this character. And like, she, she spent majority of the book being kind of a jerk, and she didn't really grow out of that until the very end, and even then, like, doing one nice thing doesn't make you stop being a jerk completely, so I just wish we had gotten more complexity from our main character. I rated this 3.5 stars out of 5, and I thought the love interest could be a little less perfect. I feel like our love interest was, like, there were no flaws with him. The only issue he had was something that was not... Like, he didn't have any character flaws. Everything about him was happening to him and was about other people, but, like, the love interest himself just didn't have much or do much other than just doing the right things and saying the right things and just, yeah. So I felt like both of our characters could have used a little bit more complexity. I really did appreciate the way that the book handles uh, racism in the ballet community, specifically looking at the Nutcracker. So this this book takes place uh, like November through February, I believe, and so the Nutcracker is kind of the main ballet that is happening during that time, as it is kind of the Christmassy ballet. Um, and so just looking at how the main character, who is Japanese American, was always cast for Chinese tea, and her best friend, the only black girl at their academy, was always cast for Arabian coffee, and just kind of bringing to light those issues uh, within the ballet world, because the, the ballet world is not even close to being perfect. And so I thought it did a really good job like handling those issues and pointing them out, but in a way where it can be constructive for the ballet community to say, okay, these are some flaws. Here's how we can change them. Here's how we can make them better. Here's how uh, we can move forward. So we're not just, we're not trying to destroy the entire theater and ballet world. We're just trying to make it more inclusive and less racist and terrible for everyone who is not white. So I did admire that about the book, but I think just overall the characters and the writing 
it was it was an average it was an average book it was a 3.5 stars so I would definitely recommend reading this though if you do like dance books or theater books as theater is another big theme in this book <laughs> and then continuing on I have started reading Royal Holiday by Jasmine Guillory and I am on I'm on page like 80 I'm about a third of the way through the book and I am really enjoying this so far I'm listening to the audiobook as well as reading the physical book and so this follows a woman who goes to England with her daughter on vacation her daughter is working but our main character is on vacation and she meets the head of security for the queen and she likes him and he likes her and it's a romance <laughs> and it's happening around Christmas it's like the week of Christmas kind of so I am liking this so far it's a little insta lovey which is not really my cup of tea but it's also like I don't mind it as much because it focuses on two adults who both have like kids and have kind of lived their life and already has their career going so they're just a little bit more mature and kind of know how to have a relationship rather than a bunch of other romances where it's like teenagers or young adults who are still figuring everything out. I think the inner dialogue of the characters, especially of our female main character, I love it a lot. I wish we had a little bit more on her relationship with her daughter and kind of what her daughter is doing at the moment, but that's okay. I still got plenty of the book to go, so I am uh, like I said, a third of the way through this one. And then on my Kindle, I am reading the on my Kindle. I'm reading The Twelve Dates of Christmas. That was the book that was selected for me uh, for the Reindeer Readathon, and so it fulfills the same prompt for the Follow a Lathon. Just started this one. I'm like a chapter into it, but that's because like I opened up the book, <laughs> and I don't have a lot of experiences with ebooks, but it kind of it just dove right into date one. And so I was like, I'm not I'm not missing a part or anything, am I? Like it fully downloaded, right? I think it did, but also we just go right into the story of the 12 Dates of Christmas. So yeah, I don't have much to say about it other than I am reading it. And so those are the three books that I will be reading over the course of this week, even though one is already finished. Yeah, I have a bunch of editing yet to do for some of the videos that I pre-filmed, so I don't know how much I will read tonight, uh, but I would like to read a bit just because getting a job I don't know what my hours are gonna be and being at home I always play so many board games and card games with my family because that is what we love to do uh, but then that does cut into reading time so now that I have time now is the time to read anyway yeah all right that is the intro to this vlog and I will catch up with you guys next time when I have read some more of one or both of these books yes. I'm back in this room and my bookshelves are mostly empty uh, except for the box of books that I brought with me so yeah I know the lighting is not great I don't think I'll do all of my updates in here because the lighting is terrible but it's also 8 30 at night and it's Tuesday so I have not made much progress on my reading. I've probably listened to about half an hour of the audiobook, maybe a little more. Um, I'm almost halfway through Royal Holiday, that's the audiobook, um, because I have been running around, I did an interview, I got a job, I start tomorrow. I am so excited. Uh, I'm really excited for this job, but also just to kind of have structure. Uh, <laughs> again, uh, that's one thing I like about having a job is that it provides structure. Um, I'm hoping that I will do some reading tonight. There's like one or two things that I have to do yet. Oh, I gotta bake my dad some more cookies. Yeah, so there are a couple things I have to do tonight, but hopefully I will make some progress on Royal Holiday. I think that's kind of my top priority at the moment. But yeah, it's, I'm sorry, it's not much of an update, but I wanted to make sure I filmed at least one clip today. If I don't end up doing any reading and then I don't want to do an update, but Anyway, so I am almost halfway through Royal Holiday, and I'm liking it. I'm thinking it's kind of being, like, the characters are trying to be spontaneous, which is great. But I'm also just kind of like, oh, 
okay. <laughs> Is there gonna be nothing else in their life that we get to see? Uh, but like I said, we'll see where it goes because uh, I'm not quite halfway and it's already Christmas. So I don't really have much else new to say about it other than that. But yeah, short little update. Just wanted to make sure I said something. Time to do some baking with my mom. Yay, let's bake some cookies. Alrighty, it is Friday, and I didn't update you yesterday, but I did do quite a bit of reading yesterday. So, I read the first 36 pages of, or not 36 pages, 36% of the 12 Dates of Christmas on my Kindle here, and I am liking it. I think there are a couple things I'm having a bit of a hard time with. I'm only a third of the way through. And we're already halfway through the dates. And that doesn't really excite me because one of my favorite parts of this book are the dates. And I don't think the dates are going to be getting longer in description. I think more is going to be happening in our main character's life outside of the dates. If I'm wrong, great. If I'm right, bummer. Um, but also... The, I had a hard time at the beginning, though, because it kind of just plops you down where she is sitting on the bench waiting for her date to show up for the first date, and she gets stood up. Sad, sad. Um, but the thing is, is that as she's sitting there, we have very little context on the 12 dates of Christmas that she's doing, but she is info dumping about her family right at the beginning, so she's talking about all these characters who we haven't met, who we don't know, who I don't really care about, and she's kind of giving her parents' whole backstory, which would be fine, except for that to be the intro of the book. I didn't really care. It got very confusing with naming different characters who I didn't know and didn't have, like, a description of. And then, even then, it was like, she keeps building on that through the book, which is fine, except that it feels less like it's building and a little bit more like repetitive but you know what are you gonna do so I just I kind of had a hard time with the balance of the book at this moment in time it kind of seemed to balance out but like I said I'm only a third of the way through and we're like halfway through the dates like I'm about to start date number seven and I still have two-thirds of the book left so I'm a little 
hesitant toward it. I have a little bit of a hard time with the writing style and just kind of how it began. There was a pretty good kind of twist to it, but I don't know if that'll turn into anything because a lot of times it'll like do the intro of the date and then it'll just kind of skip to her going home and it's, I don't know, that's, it just feels awkward kind of where it cuts off the date or where it skips time and yeah, I don't know, I'm just having a hard time with the writing and like the sequencing of things, so I hope it gets better, otherwise it's, it's somewhere between a two and a three star for me at the moment. But like I said, I still have a whole bunch of the book left to decide on with. Uh, but as it is also Friday, it is now Thrill to the Weekend. So while this is the last weekend for the fall and I need to finish the 12 Days of Christmas, and then I need to take my holiday photo, and I need to watch a holiday movie, I'm going to do all those things this weekend. But it's also Thrill to the Weekend, and I participated in the fall version of this and now we are doing the winter version of this which is super exciting and their prompt for that is to read a book with a serial killer but they also have like a group book that they're reading together I don't have the group book I don't have access to it so I won't be reading the group book but I am reading one by one by Ruth Ware because this is on my reindeer readathon TBR it's kind of all my December TBR my winter TBR you know it's a book that I want to read so I have the audiobook for this, so I will be listening slash reading to it all of this weekend, along with the 12 Dates of Christmas. Um, so I want to finish this, both of these, this weekend, and I think I can do it. I do have to work tomorrow, and then I have church on Sunday, and that's, and then my family normally comes over and plays games. So like, I don't have a lot of reading time on Sunday, and I have quite a few things that I need to do today, and then I have to work almost what seven hours on Saturday which isn't like a bad work shift but it does kind of cut down my reading time I don't know I'm really gonna try and get this done the audiobook is gonna take me almost seven hours to listen to so I'm almost wondering if it, it would be faster for me to sit down and read it but I'm also trying to sit down and make my way through 12 days of Christmas so we'll see what happens um but yeah that is my update for the moment. We are going to go to a place called Meyer Gardens, and it has this beautiful winter display. Um, I believe every year they put up many different Christmas trees and decorate them according to different cultures. So they look at like pictures and they go to places and they see how they decorate their trees, what kind of ornaments they use, if they use ornaments at all, and they mimic it and they have like this whole hall set up. And, it, Meyer Gardens is also known for like having butterflies in the spring and it's got a Japanese garden outside and it hosts concerts. It's just, it's this overall beautiful place all year round and it is so much fun to go to. So I'm going to be going to that like now-ish, uh, but I will catch up with you guys once I've made some progress. It is, geez, it's Saturday at 5.30. I got home from work like an hour ago. I am listening to One by One by Ruth Ware. Um, 
I am about maybe 20% in. I am approaching 100 pages. Um, and I'm enjoying it a lot so far. Uh, I'm nervous that I won't be able to finish it through tomorrow because it is thrilled to the weekend. Uh, but I'm definitely going to try because we are going to see the new Spider-Man movie in theaters tonight. Uh, super exciting. I, I like I like Ruth Ware's writing in this. I, I love the characters and the dialogue just feels... It's, it's got that great balance between, like, the characters are funny, but it also feels like what people would say, and it's interesting. And I also think that the narrator of the audiobook plays a huge part in that, too. Like, the way that she does the tonation and inflections, it feels like she's very familiar with the book and the characters, and that it, it just comes across really, really nicely. So I am greatly enjoying the audiobook for this, even though it is the slower way for me to consume the story. I've kind of, and the other thing is though too is that I'm still only like less than halfway, or I'm almost halfway through the 12 Dates of Christmas and Fala La La Thon also finishes tomorrow. And that's, and that's the last book I have to finish for the Fala La La Thon. So to finish both of these books through tomorrow, it's gonna be interesting. I luckily don't have to work tomorrow, but I do go to church and then my brother comes over for like lunch and then games afterwards. So, my time kind of on Sundays is very unreliable, and I still need to edit my video for Sunday? Or, yeah. Oh, no, 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 not for Sunday. For Tuesday. So, <laughs> we shall see. Plus, I need to do my more Christmas shopping. It's just, oh, there's so much to do, so little time. Uh, but yeah, I'm enjoying one by one. I think at this point, I am just waiting for the avalanche to happen and the first murder to happen. Like, the story is enticing and I am intrigued, but I'm also just, I'm just waiting for what I know is coming. And it's just being a drawn out. And if it's drawn out any longer, I'm gonna be a little annoyed. Like, if the avalanche doesn't happen within the day that we're on, and if someone isn't murdered by the next day, then it's drawn on for too long. I, we're not there yet, we're not there yet, but... That's just kind of what I'm feeling at the moment. So yeah, that's my little update. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep listening to one by one just because it is the biggest. And while I can listen to an audiobook, I want to. Um, so I'll probably listen to it more tonight and then hopefully I'll also read a little bit of 12 Dates of Christmas. So yeah. Hi, so it's later on the same evening. We saw Spider-Man No Way Home, blew my mind. Uh, but now I'm back and I'm reading again. But can I just say, the bookmark for the Reindeer Readathon matches the book quite nicely. Just the shade, the dark blue of the bookmark and the dark blue of the title match. And they're both snowy themes because Avalanche. So I'm really loving and appreciating the matching going on with the book and the bookmark. I always try to match my book with the bookmark, but with the Reindeer Readathon, I wanted to use my readathon bookmarks for those books, but I'm just so glad they match. Anyway, I am at page 150 out of like 350, so I'm a little over a third of the way. Yeah, and oh, I have a prediction that would involve a very large twist, but I feel like it's the kind of twist that would happen in books, so I'm not going to tell you what my prediction is because I would like to be able to say if I'm right or not. But I will not spoil the book. So I'm saying I have a pretty wild... I have I have an idea. I, I, I don't know if I want to be right or not because I feel like if I'm right, it's a major twist that is easy to see. But I feel like if I'm wrong, then it better be good. Like, done well. And not just like... Oh, I was wrong because it was something even easier than what I was thinking. But yeah, I am reading it and I'm going to keep reading it. It's it's almost midnight, but so I shouldn't stay up too much later. Sorry, the camera's really shaky. Um, it's almost midnight, so I shouldn't stay up too much later. But I just want to keep reading because we finally got like a murder now. Like it wasn't the avalanche, it was someone is dead. So... I would, I would very much like to just keep going. Um, I'm very curious how many murders there will be because the idea is that it's one by one, they're getting killed. Um, so I don't know how many people are going to get killed. 
So I'm, I'm intrigued. I just, I just want to keep reading. <laughs> so I'm going to do that. I probably won't update you until tomorrow though. Um, but I would like to keep reading and to finish. in here but this is the only even remotely quiet-ish place to film so I'll make it brief it's Sunday night it's like 9 30 maybe almost 9 30 and I finished one by one by Ruth Ware so in my book I officially completed thrill to the weekend this was my horror novel that fulfilled the serial killer prompt which was the only prompt other than the group read which I could not do. I finished this. I'm rating this 4.5 stars. I loved it. There were a few things that bothered me, but this amazing winter vibes. I loved the writing. The characters were great. I loved just the comedy and just the way that they, their dialogue felt so natural, like what human beings would actually say in this kind of situation. And also the audiobook narrator. Amazing. <laughs> so, I loved it. I love all the mystery and the suspense elements. I was kind of disappointed at the reveal. I wish it had been a little bit later in the book just to keep the suspense going a little longer, but I also think they did draw out the ending too much even after everything was revealed, but I have that issue with a lot of books. I think a lot of books just keep going on way too long, but yeah, this was amazing. 4.5 stars. Loved it. Hey y'all, hello. It is now Monday. It is the end of the Full of Lothon and Thrill Till the Weekend. And oh my goodness, I was so close to being completely successful. <sighs> but I mean, it was a very busy week. We moved back home and I got a job and like when we're home we play a lot of games. Like I always feel like my vlogs when I'm home at my parents house are always just not quite as fun because while I am having a lot of fun at home I don't always film it because it's really just a lot of board games and card games. I mean to be fair I had a pretty successful reading week. The first book that I finished was not part of any of the readathons that I was doing for this week although I did end up including it in other things but it was just kind of a oh hey the audiobook came in I'm gonna read it and I listened to the audiobook while we were driving home I listened to it all the way through because it was amazing. 
And that was A Lesson in Vengeance by Victoria Lee. I meant to read this in October for a spooky season. Um, but I thought, you know, I still want to read it even not in spooky season so that I can have it and either recommend it for next year or, you know, I just still enjoy the story and it's Dark Academia. So, like, I enjoy Dark Academia at all times of the year. It doesn't necessarily have to be spooky season, but that's when everybody else is reading it. So that's kind of when we get all the recommendations. I loved this. So I rated this five stars. Was it a perfect book? Probably not. Do I care? Not at all. I love this and so it is going to be a five stars. I think the only thing I wish was different about this book was that the characters were actually in college. So okay, let me back up and tell you what this book is about. So this book follows our main character who is an unreliable narrator. I normally hate unreliable narrators because I feel like they're just never done well. But I loved this reliable narrator. Okay, anyway, no, I'm trying to tell you a summary. She goes to this high school where you kind of, it's more like a, it's an academy, it's a, like a prep school, everyone kind of lives in these different houses that focus on different things and you apply to try and live in these houses and our main character lives in the house that's kind of literature themed, you know, it's for writers and readers and she has this huge traumatic event that happens that causes her to drop out of her senior year. But she still decides she wants to go back to school and finish her senior year and she even lives back in her same room in that literature focused house. But there's this new girl named Ellis and she is a 17 year old prize winning author. I think she won the Pulitzer for one of her novels already and everybody is obsessed with her. And so she has come to this school because the school has a really unique history of the five Dalloway witches who are all, you know, killed in ways that are almost impossible and so would involve magic. So Ellis decides that she is going to write a novel based off of these witches proving that magic does not exist. So her challenge is to go through and figure out how each of the witches died without magic. And she enlists the help of our main character to help her do so. I fully thought I was not going to like Ellis. I was fully prepared for her to be just like that snooty annoying like I won the Pulitzer or like even just oh I'm just a normal person who I'm just trying to write my next book and you know everybody's obsessed with me but it's fine. I loved this character. Like I don't know what happened, what event, what Ella said to actually make me like this character but just like all the other characters in the book I was like under her spell. I don't quite understand why I liked her. I just did. The dark academia vibes are so freaking strong. Like Ellis dresses like that that literature student and living in the house and their thesis statements and the books that they're reading i just oh my goodness i i just loved the vibes the entire time the mystery was great the characters like i said i love the unreliable narrator very unexpected for me i read this in a day as an audiobook and it was a page turner i just could not put it down like this was just a school and a setting i wanted to be there it made me want to sit down and write my own novel like this is something i honestly might want to reread sometime next year either when i have a lot of time and can do some writing i think this would be a book for me to reread to get me in the writing mood or honestly next spooky season I, I understand this may not be everybody's cup of tea. I think that there are probably some elements of this that other people didn't like. But for me, this this was it. So I read this on last Saturday, which was after the full lawthon started, I believe. So, yeah, there's that. And then I read The Other Side of Perfect, and this is by Mariko Turk. This follows our main character, who was a ballerina, and she was so dedicated to her art and then she ends up falling and breaking her leg and she is told she cannot dance professionally or she cannot pursue a dance career so she has to go to a normal high school where she gets involved in musical theater i rated this three out of five stars which might even be a little generous but i'm okay with it I, I think the writing was solid, but I could not get past our main character. I think it took way too long for her character growth to be apparent, 
and I was just waiting for her to be a better person and waiting for her to grow up and she just didn't until like the last few pages which just did not save her for me. I wish it, uh, she had either started her character growth earlier in the book and had like a smaller crescendo or just had more character growth earlier in the book. She was just kind of a jerk the entire time, which was a really weird contrast with the love interest because I feel like the love interest just was perfect. There was nothing wrong with his character. He was this perfect guy that whatever. And I feel like they tried to give him some flaws, but the flaw they gave him was that he, his dad kind of flaked, which doesn't reflect in him much at all which just still made him perfect. So I just, I wasn't a fan. I felt like that was kind of unrealistic. I wasn't that big a fan of the romance either. The parents in this book were just way too chill with everything going on. And, but I will say in terms of the ballet aspect, hit the feelings right on top of the nail, right on the head. Uh, I had a lot of these similar feelings when I had to stop dancing. I just, I was really sad. I was not happy about it. And so I feel like a lot of the withdrawal that our main character went through is very relatable. And I really liked how the issues of race in the ballet world was portrayed in this book because I feel like there are obviously a lot of issues uh, regarding race in the ballet world and they definitely need to be addressed. But I like how this book was just like ballet isn't terrible because it has race issues. Like yes, there are race issues and those need to be addressed and they need to be changed but that doesn't mean that the entire institution of ballet is the worst thing in the world like the dance itself is still beautiful but we need to no stop casting minority race dancers in minority race characters because there are not very many of them and the ones that they have are very racist and they just it's a whole thing and so I really loved how the author handled that in this book saying how like the example they used throughout the book was the Nutcracker which made this book quite Christmassy which was kind of a nice bonus. I did not think this was going to be Christmassy uh, but it, it took place over Christmas and talk about the Nutcracker. But anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. Just talking about how Arabian coffee and the Chinese dance are the way that they are handled in the ballet world is not great. Um, because they will put anyone who remotely looks like they could be from like China or an Arabian country in those roles even if that's not who they are but then they never let those dancers have any other roles no matter their technique and their talent and that is a huge problem and of course not every ballet company has this issue but most of them do especially the very traditional ones and so I really liked how that was handled I thought it was so interesting how our main character just didn't quite notice it until her little sister had to spell it out to her because that's what's programmed in these ballerinas when they're so little. Mm. Anyway, so I very much enjoyed this book for those reasons. I think it was just a solidly written book, but outside of that, I just, I had a hard time with the characters. The next book that I finished doing this week was Royal Holiday by Jasmine Guillory. I rated this three out of five stars. Again, I thought this was another like solid book. So this follows our main character who her daughter has a work trip over the holidays to England and her daughter invites her along and she's like, yeah, I could use a holiday. So she goes over to England to stay with a duke and duchess while her daughter is designing her outfits for them for the holiday festivities and she meets the head of the queen's guard and he's cute and it's their romance it was a solid book. I I think it was a little insta-lovey with their relationship, which wasn't my favorite thing, but at the same time I get that they're like adults and they don't really have time to kind of beat around the bush. Like I appreciate that, but I wish there was a little bit more emotion going into their romance beforehand rather than just like, oh he's cute. You know, I just, it was a little insta-lovey. I wish there was a slight more buildup of their feelings for each other. In between like the first meeting and the first date like it just but I did really like our main character I thought she was fun another thing I kind of wished though was that there was a little bit more to the characters in this book so I feel like all we learned about these characters was like their romance and also their jobs like again I get that they 
have very demanding jobs and that it takes up a lot of their life, but I still feel like they're characters. They still are humans that have other interests and even if they don't get have have a chance to like do hobbies, they should still have hobbies or things that they think they like to do. I just felt like the only sides of the characters we saw were in love with each other and their work. And I wish we could have had a little bit more rounded characters. Otherwise, I think the audiobook for this also was a really good audiobook. The narrator read it really well and definitely made the characters come to life. And she didn't just like read the dialogue, she gave feeling and emotion to the dialogue, which was really neat. But yeah, I mean, this book just was all about this couple. Very little else in this book. And... Yeah, like, it, it was just solidly written. I really admire, though, how the the main characters were adults and they acted like adults. Like, they still have fun and they still get giddy about a new romance, but also they're not going to do as much miscommunication or they're not going to pull a bunch of crap with each other. They, like, they did have a little miscommunication moment, but they communicated and they talked about it and it was a little bit a cultural difference, which was kind of, you know, which was fine. Um, but I liked how this romance was much, like, it was an adult romance because the main characters were adults and they handled everything like adults and I really liked that in this book. Um, again, Christmas vibes were great. The ending was interesting, but yeah, I just, I felt like this book wasn't really anything special. It wasn't bad, but, like, I'd still recommend it, but even, but, like, only if it sounds like this is a book you would love because like I said I just I felt like all that we talked about was their romance and then they talked to each other about work but past that there just wasn't much I wish there was more with the relationship with our main character and her daughter like I just felt like we were lacking there those were the books that I read I guess these two were the books that I read for the follow the lothon um there was I did end up substituting a book for a prompt uh, which I think was okay. Uh, I started reading The Twelve Dates of Christmas and I'm only 50% of the way. I didn't end up finishing it during the fall of the Lothon, which was a bummer, but I kind of substituted that, the book, or the prompt that I was using that book for with another book that I did manage to finish, um, which was the book I read for Thrill to the Weekend, One by One by Ruth Ware. Like I said in a previous clip, I had finished this and I liked it a lot. Um, this is a 4.5 star read for me. It is all the winter vibes and it's all the thriller vibes. And so that I just loved and I would recommend it purely based on that. Things that I loved about this book, the writing was phenomenal. It was gripping. It had me intrigued the entire way through. Like I could not put this book down. I just needed to keep reading it. I read it so quickly because of that fact. I loved the characters, especially, so the characters were all, you know, very unique, but the dialogue was phenomenal. It felt so natural and so real. And again, I think the narrator of the audiobook for this did an amazing job bringing the characters to life, acting out the dialogue, not just reading it in character voices, but like emphasizing it. And she did that not even with the dialogue, but just with both point of views that we follow with these characters like it honestly felt like it was it was life it was real so this book follows two point of views which i didn't know by the time we got to the end i wish it wasn't that way but i also kind of understand why it was so we are following this work company called Snoop who have developed this app and it's getting really big and they decide to do like a company retreat in a chalet in the mountains of France. So we are following one of the shareholders for that company who used to be an employee who's really kind of socially awkward, doesn't quite know how to fit in with all of her other employees. She was hired very on very early on in the company and she comes from a very different background than the rest of the people. And then we also follow one of the two um, staff at the chalet. She is kind of the maid, kind of the server, you know. The other guy is the cook and she does pretty much everything else. Which I feel like there would be a little bit more staff at the chalet, but whatever, okay. And basically there's this huge avalanche and they get stuck there, they run out of power, and they can't call for help. And then... 
so one of their co-workers kind of disappears in that avalanche and then they start being killed one by one um so there's a lot of mystery a lot of suspense obviously i mean it's a thriller i will try not to spoil it but when we get into things that would be spoilery that's where i kind of started to have issues and that's what kind of made it dropped from a 5 star to like a 4 or 4.5. I think they revealed the killer way too early. I wasn't happy with who it is and why. Like, it felt like the predictable, it was so predictable that I thought that possibly, that couldn't possibly be how it goes. And then it was. And I was really disappointed by that. I was really disappointed on just like, it felt like the author took the easy way out rather than like, actually doing something that took a lot of thought and effort into making it interesting and unique and then i felt like they they dragged out the ending way too long both like after we found out it was the killer there was still like a hundred pages left of this 350 page book and i just felt like it was just too long of an ending i got bored i didn't care anymore like there were still events happening after that but I didn't care anymore, and I just kind of wanted the book to be over. Like, I don't even know how much I really understood the last couple of short chapters, because I just didn't care. But other than, like, that ending and the reveal, it was an amazing book, and I would still recommend people to read it. I think this would be a really good starter book for people like me who don't have a lot of experience with thriller and suspense books. Um, this would probably be a good one, because I feel like anyone who's experienced would be like, Kind of like me, where they're like, what the heck was with that ending? Um, but again, love the characters. Such good writing. Wonderful winter vibes. Like, so much skiing was in this book. So much. And I am not a skier, but I didn't mind all the skiing. And so, yes. Really, really good book. So, that, I ended up substituting this book for one of the prompts in the Follow a Lothon so that I could still complete it, and this completed my thrill to the weekend. So these were all the books that I read this past week, and it was a pretty solid reading week. I feel like the, the books that I read to be Christmassy have been kind of letting me down, but the other books have been great, so yeah. Merry Christmas, everybody, uh, if you celebrate Christmas. And happy holidays if you celebrate other holidays or you don't actually celebrate and you just love the winter aesthetics. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know if you participated in either of the readathons. I would love to know how your week has been reading wise. Um, otherwise, click subscribe to see more videos from me. Hit the bell so that you're notified. I am posting four videos throughout the month of December. Otherwise, I post twice a week on Sundays and Wednesdays. In, and that will start up again in January as normal. Um, otherwise, I have a whole bunch of book of social media that I have linked in the description below if you want to follow me on those or become friends and then I can see some of the books that you're reading and get recommendations from you and you can get more in depth of what I am reading and all my reviews. Um, otherwise, like this video if you liked it. And yeah, I think that's everything. So until I see you all in the next video, I wish you happy reading. Thank you.